Well, my friends, Brooks is at it again. The Brooks catamount sprung onto the trail scene a few years back, seemingly moments before Western States 100. The white tell your story with dirt design was bold and the shoe was a dynamic offering from Brooks, but the shoe was not perfect. Completely redesigned from the ground up, this is the Catamount 2. A new mesh upper that features earthen tones and classic Brooks styling sits atop a reduced layer of DNA flash midsole that provides the classic responsive Brooks feel. A small plate, adorably named the Sky Vault, helps keep the shoe snappy and stiff on the uphills. The outsole provides sticky grip that finally works well in inclement Pacific Northwest weather, nice job Brooks, and I've finally enjoyed rocking these in a variety of conditions. All that to be said, is the redesign enough to keep the catamount at the front of the pack? And can it keep up with more cushioned or dynamic shoes that are out there on the market? Hopefully we'll find out in today's review. Let's dive in. What is up everybody, Ethan Newberry, the Ginger Runner here for another Ginger Runner review. We're gonna get right into it. Today, we're talking about this little bad boy from Brooks. It's the Catamount 2. Low, fast, snappy. There's lots to talk about in today's review, but of course, before we dive in, I have to point out that these shoes were provided for review by Brooks. I'm under no obligation to say anything positive or negative. I'm not financially compensated in any way by Brooks for anything that I say in this review. All opinions are my own. No one has to approve this video. You're the first to see it. Give yourself a pat on whatever needs patent, and let's dive in. We're gonna start with the basics, the things that I like and dislike. Uh, it's the same with every review that I ever do. Starting as always with the things that I like. The fit. So this is something I did like in the first version and I really like in the second version. The overall fit is glove-like while not being too precision fit. Great fit across the midfoot, decent amount of room in the toe box, good ankle lockdown. It kind of does everything that I want it to do in a shoe that's more towards the race type effort, but I really like the way that this shoe feels and fits on my feet. Responsiveness. So the Flash DNA midsole, I'm not always the biggest fan of it. It is a very responsive midsole. Uh, I don't think it's overwhelmingly so in the Catamount 2. I did in the Catamount 1. It was a little dense, a little harsh underfoot. The Catamount 2 kind of does away with that. We have a little bit of that softness. Could use a little bit more, but what it does end up doing is leaning more towards that responsive end of the spectrum, which does make this a really solid race-ready shoe, something comparable to the Shadog, which I reviewed last week. It's kind of that competitor in that low-slung, super-fast, responsive realm. Uh, yeah, leans into that. Here for it. Grip! They're finally nailing grip! Brooks has had a problem with grip for years, and I don't know why, because they are a Pacific Northwest company, built and designed in Seattle. Uh, I've just never really liked their outsole rubber. I don't know if they've changed it or if this is the same stuff or they redid the recipe or something, but uh, the Catamount 2 has good lugs, has good grip. So I've been running in this in all sorts of inclement conditions, whether it's rain or snow, we've had some snow recently. Uh, and the lugs and the grip are pretty damn good in the Catamount 2. Nice. Ground feel. So that's something I think this shoe does really, really well, is it provides you an experience that's protective underfoot but gets you the ground feel that you need to feel like you're racing and can move quickly through the mountains or whatever terrain that you're moving across. It doesn't disguise the fact that it's you know not super cushioned and, and absorbing all of those sharp rocks and roots and stuff. Uh, you'll feel it all, but not in a bad way. So I think the overall ground feel here benefits the shoe, puts you in touch with the earth below your feet. And again, feels something like a Solomon or that Shidog that I just reviewed. I, I, that's a good thing. Good ground feel. That being said, it's not all Pedro Pascal movies and five loop finishers of the Barkley Marathons. There are a couple of things that I dislike about the Catamount 2. Let's get to those now. Cushion. So I've already talked about how this responsive midsole, that flash DNA is a good thing. Gets you good ground feel, is that tighter blend that doesn't feel really soft underfoot. I wish it was a little softer, a bit more forgiving. So this is a carryover from that first version of the Catamount that was a little stiff underfoot. Didn't quite give me as much cushioning or comfort as I was hoping for, just because there is so much ground feel, it is so responsive, it'd be nice to have that little extra couple millimeters of midsole that are softer. I think it's more the flash DNA midsole than anything that I have a bit of a gripe with. And finally, price. The shoe is 170 bucks. I think that's at the higher end of the price point, especially for a shoe that has a little bit of less of everything. Uh, I would like that to be maybe 130, 140 bucks, but I see it is their sort of race ready shoe. So they kind of want to, market it a bit differently, higher price point, durable materials used to build it. Uh, it's just a bit high for my taste, so I'm gonna call them out as a negative here. But that is ultimately it for dislikes on the Catamount 2. I think it's a much better version than the first one. Oh boy, I'm gonna sneeze. 
<coughs> uh, let's get to the breakdown and talk more specifically about build quality, comfort, fit, price, and look. Starting, as always, with build quality. I think the shoe's built quite well. Uh, they think the materials they're using are gonna last you a long time. The welded overlays add some additional durability. That midsole's not gonna break down super prematurely because it is so responsive. Outsole's holding up well. Uh, yeah, build quality is damn good. Comfort, I think this is the shoe's sort of weakness. It's a more comfortable shoe than the first version because you get a bit better fit through the midfoot, through the toe box. That midsole doesn't feel as dense or compressive as the first version. Uh, it's a bit more flexible than the first version. I just wish there was a little bit more softness underfoot. Fit, I think it's a huge selling point for the shoe. It fits a lot better than the first version. The first version felt a little narrow, a little tall. This feels the opposite of that. A little bit lower to ground, better ground feel, and a little bit more width and tightness through the midfoot, which is great. Good lockdown, solid fit. Price, 170 bucks, already mentioned it. It's a dislike, just a little bit steep for my taste. I wish it was just, you know, 20, 30 bucks lower than that, and I'd feel pretty good about it. And finally, looks. Not a bad looking shoe. Brooks kind of does this muted earthen tones really well. A lot of their shoes feature those types of tones, but then again, they sometimes have really bright shoes as well. I like this, I dig it. They also have a blue version, which is also pretty cool. So nice job, Brooks. The design, the shoe, it's all round good. Bringing us ultimately to our conclusion. I like the Catamount 2. I like it a lot better than the Catamount 1. I felt that that shoe was a bit unfinished. It was ready for Western States and some of the Brooks athletes did really, really well in that shoe at Western States and other races that summer. I just felt it was a bit undercooked. Whereas this feels like they got the recipe right and they delivered a pretty damn solid product that does better the first version. So yeah, I'm sold on the Catamount 2. It's certainly catering to those who prefer a responsive ride and a lower profile, closer to the ground, more ground feel style of ride. If that is what describes you and that is something that intrigues you, this is one of those shoes I think you're gonna dig. And it's gonna give Solomon style racers and normal a run for their money. And that I think will make a lot of you quite happy. Which ultimately brings me to my final criteria. Is the Catamount 2 from Brooks a buy, try, or a why? You might be surprised to hear me say, buy. I think it's a damn good race ready shoe. I run a ton of miles in it. I've enjoyed them all. I think it's a really good improvement and I have to commend Brooks on that improvement. Uh, so yeah, this is a buy. It's a little pricey, but you know, if you can afford it, Look into it. And that, my friends, is it for today's review. If you have any questions or want more information about the Brooks Catamount 2, there is a link in the description that'll take you over to Running Warehouse. It's an affiliate link. It does cost you nothing, but it does help the channel out. That's one way that you can help the channel. So consider using that link or getting any of your running gear over there at Running Warehouse by using that link. It does help us, so consider it. Uh, but I have a question for you. Have you tried it? The Catamount 2, are you looking forward to it? Is it something you're interested in? Comments below, let me know. That's it, friends. Uh, social media links, websites, Join the GR crew, all the things. Uh, but seriously, join the GR crew if you have not already. It's a great way to support the channel. Uh, get some really great perks on the back end. We do daily live streams, all sorts of fun group events, and we have a book club, we have a Discord server, all sorts of stuff. We encourage it. It's fun. That's all. Get out there, train hard, race harder, and part of the hardest. I know I am. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. <laughs>